Well, good evening and welcome to Carols with Coco. And uh, our host tonight is uh, our very own Garrett De La Cerda. And so I hope that you enjoy your Coco and Garrett, over to you. Hello. So, okay, so everyone has, has Coco or something to drink, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, Carol, Carol doesn't have Coco. <laughs> Not, no carol with coco here <laughs> i have a question thoroughly unrelated to christmas carols i was looking at everyone's mugs when they raised them up and i was wondering if you if you picked a mug specifically for tonight or if you just grabbed one out of the if you have a favorite like this is one of my favorite mugs it's got the lyrics um to a song from rent um how do you measure a year in daylight, sunsets, midnights, cups of coffee, inches, miles, laughter, strife, 525, 600 minutes, 1,600 minutes, and love. So, I grabbed one of my favorites. So, uh, I have other I have other mugs that aren't appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'll go. My mug is um, I picked it because it was small. And so I had to savor my little bit of cocoa that I have. And so um, it's a Canterbury uh, cross in a Canterbury Ooh. mug I got in Canterbury Cathedral. And so oh, wow. I was like, yes, carols. I was feeling like the old English cathedral. And I'm like, oh, I'm bringing it back. Hey, that's actually, you know, well, that's awesome. It's a lovely mug, but also ties in to a little bit of what, what we're going to talk about tonight. You're welcome. Well, thank you. <laughs> Oh. Um, so, oh, oh, Jan has a mug. Oh, I do. Mine is Santa Claus Bear, <laughs> and actually, it was Father Bob Redman. Uh, I was one of his caregivers, and uh, when he passed, I got his mug, and it kind of fits because he was like oh. a bear. <laughs> so that's wonderful. It, uh, <laughs> God bless, bless you. you. Well, so let's let's talk about let's talk about carols, and for our purposes tonight, you know, I'm I'm going to stick with with, uh, with hymns, uh, carols that are that are now included in uh, hymnody and in our hymnal. Um, does does I guess we do we all we all have at least one favorite carol, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe more. Some of us have many favorites. <coughs> what are some of your favorite carols? Uh, one of my favorite is Low How a Rose Are Blooming. Low How a Rose Are Blooming. That's a beautiful, beautiful text and a beautiful melody. Uh, Jan, you said Silent Night. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful. Does everyone know the story? Uh, well, I'll share it with you. So, um, uh, I think it was, I think his name was Franz Gruber um, was, and there's a, there's a silent night chapel uh, in Europe. Anyway, it was a, it was Christmas Eve was coming and the priest of the, of his church, the silent night chapel, as it's known now, um, asked Gruber to compose a piece for uh, Christmas Eve. And he composed, and this is in, uh, the 18, uh, um, he composed uh, Stille Nacht. It, it was a German, in, originally in German, uh, or Silent Night. And so he, had, he began rehearsing uh, Silent Night with his choirs, his choir, and um, with, on the organ. Um, and unfortunately, when Christmas Eve rolled around, the organ, uh, the, some of the, the tubing from the bellows had been eaten away by uh, church mice. And so the organ wouldn't work. And the only other instrument that Gruber played was um, uh, guitar. And so the very first, the, the, the Christmas Eve that Silent Night premiered um, uh, many, many, many years ago, um, again, this is the 1800s, um, he was played on a guitar. And so a lot of churches will on their Christmas, in their Christmas Eve services, and, and I'm one too, um, and in my ministry over the years, anytime Silent Night has been sung at a Christmas Eve service or mass, 
um, I always try to have it accompanied by guitar and we share the story, you know, uh, typically. And, um, but you can, you can visit uh, the Silent Night Chapel and, and that old organ is still there and it doesn't work. <laughs> Um, so, you know, carols, <clears throat> carols are, uh, uh, in their original form are, or, uh, are really dances. Did you guys know that? There were dances that, uh, in, in often had lyrics, oftentimes had lyrics, but they were, uh, really used at parties, um, uh, uh, in the, uh, this is kind of pre-Victorian era. Um, and it's, it's a, I forget what, there was a, some kind of joy, a joyful dance. There, there's a certain name and I've forgotten it. Um, but have, if you have ever seen a movie version or the musical version of Sc uh, Christmas Carol or read a Christmas Carol, um, the scene that I would point you to, in fact, I, Oh, I don't have it up. Um, the scene I would point you to is is when uh, Christmas Past, the ghost of Christmas Past, takes Scrooge to visit his old boss Fezziwig, and typically how that is depicted is they're in you know a huge barn, um, and it's a party, and this this band little little band starts playing, um, kind of like a jig. Um, <laughs> Okay, and they're dancing. It's a it's a group dance, and so they're dancing and they're spinning and they're you know running up and down the thing. Um, th these these are really the the origin of the of the carol as we know it today. Um, that has changed over the years. Carols were first sung in Europe uh, thousands of years ago, um, but as you can imagine, they weren't Christmas carols. <laughs> They, they were pagan songs sung to uh, sung at uh, various celebrations like the winter solstice um, and people danced, danced around um, stone circles and things like that. Maybe even a, um, maybe even Stonehenge, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, and so that, you know, and, and that aspect of, of these carols, carry of carols carried through, <clears throat> uh, has carried through to today. Um, the winter uh, solstice was a big, big celebration. And like all things, you know, the church comes along and the church sees this celebration and the church decides uh, to, to claim this for, for Christ, um, to claim this, you know, that's right. Is, am I right, Meredith? <laughs> Assimilation, like absolutely. We, the church comes along and claims this, 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 this festival for Christ, um, and we get, you know, our, our December celebrations. Um, so it's, you know, carols are really uh, dances or songs of praise and joy. Um, they uh, used to be written for all four seasons, not just uh, this uh, Christmas time. Um, but only, it's interesting to me that, that only the tradition of singing them at this time of year uh, has really survived. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I need another sip of cocoa. So, you know, it's it's been said, and I think rightly so, um, that you know, unless you can dance, you you can't properly sing a carol. And so, um, you know, sometimes that can mean any kind of movement. But you know, they carols. We always. <laughs> We always, uh, they bring joy, do they not? They are uh, heartwarming in a way. Um, they bring joy, they bring warmth, um, even to, to those, and I'm, I'm one of those now, who, um, you know, has some struggles uh, during the holidays. Um, and they bring me tremendous amounts of joy. So I wanna start, uh, we're gonna we're gonna block back and forth here, but I'm gonna start with um, angels we have heard on high. Um, I'm gonna jump ahead here. Can you can any of us imagine a world um, without Christmas? It's that's that's pretty hard to do. Um, 
harder still is to imagine Christmas without our, our what we think of as our traditional Christmas carols. Um, there was, there's was a period of time in our history, American history, when that's exactly what happened though. Um, in the, in the um, 1600s, uh, a bunch of influential Christians didn't really care for how commercial uh, Christmas had become. And so the colony in Massachusetts banned uh, celebrating the holiday altogether. Um, that lasted before about 20, 20 plus years or so. Um, and when I think about that, that just doesn't, that does not compute in my mind. Um, I find I, I, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to wrap my head around that. Um, I know not everyone celebrates Christmas or this time of year for the same reason. Um, but I think we're all thankful that we have these Christmas carols to remind us um, of why we celebrate um, and to help us praise God um, for keeping uh, God's promise to send a savior to our people. Um, so I'm going to, if you, you may sing along if you like, um, it may be best if we are all muted because I think this might work better, but I'm going to play through angels we have heard on high. Okay. And we can sing and then we're going to talk a little bit. Garrett, would you like me to put up on the screen um, some lyrics, or do sure. you want us to watch you? Well, no, go ahead, put up lyrics. We're gonna we're gonna only sing the first verse. Okay. <clears throat> so while she while Meredith is finding, then I'm gonna start playing this. <laughs> think about uh, let's take I want to take this this one apart um can you tag can anyone guess what what um was probably one of the hardest smelliest and most dangerous jobs uh during Jesus's time shepherds I saw Mar I couldn't hear you but I saw Marcia mouth say it so being a shepherd, yes, being a shepherd. Um, 10 points over to Marcy. <laughs> um, I'm not muted now. Not, there we go, there we go. Uh, shepherds worked long, long hours uh, and they slept outside. They chased away uh, dangerous animals and thieves. They had to find water for themselves, for their flocks. Um, but even though their job was hard, shepherds didn't always uh, get a lot of thanks. Um, but this hymn shows us, or this carol shows us that God cares about everyone, shepherds included. Um, and that's part of why we read in Luke that he sent angels to the shepherds to announce the birth of Christ. In, in this hymn, in this carol, we sing the, the story of the shepherds and we sing the song of the angels, glory to God in the highest. Although we don't know who wrote this carol, and that's, that's an interesting fact, we don't know um, who composed this carol. We do know that the song was originally in French, written in um, the 18th century, and then later translated into English about in the early 1860s. Um, 
the carol speaks of, of hearing the angel song um, echoing in the mountains uh, and then questions the shepherds about um, why they are so happy. Then it answers and begs those of us who are listening and singing uh, to come to Bethlehem to see the baby Jesus. Then the, the carol answers, um, uh, the carol answers um, or invites us rather to imagine Jesus lying in a manger. Um, after it questions the shepherds, it answers and begs those to come to Bethlehem. Um, and then it invites us in verse two, which we didn't, I'll read it. Um, Shepherds, why this, why this jubilee? Why the songs of happy cheer? What great brightness did you see? What glad tidings did you hear? And then we get to the chorus. The chorus, the refrain, is, is the, the song of the angels. So we have this question. Uh, Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why these songs of happy cheer? What great brightness did you see? What glad tidings did you hear? And in response to that, <coughs> pardon me, we sing the song of the angels. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Um, and so there's this back and forth. Um, then, in, as I said, in verse three, uh, we were invited to come to Bethlehem, come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Um, and we are, we're giving a, given an even greater description uh, in the last verse, see him in a manger lay, um, whom the angels praise above. Mary, Joseph, lend your aid while we raise our hearts in love. And that's, that's a direct action. The, the carol is asking us now, those of us who are singing, to lift our voices and join in with the angel's uh, song one last time. Um, and it's such a beautiful juxtaposition of these two, these question and answer, question and answer. Um, it sticks with, it, it really, it sticks with us. Um, and it, 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 singing this carol kind of encourages us to praise God um, uh, and reminds us that God cares about all of us, every single one of us, whether they are shepherds, kings, or you and me. Yes? It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hymn. Um, let's, let's talk about, let me, let, me, let me clip and find it here. Do, 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 do. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing. So if Meredith, if you would look for that, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the intro, and um, we can we can listen to that. And when we get the when we get the uh, the lyrics up, we'll sing it. Okay, I, I'm gonna, you're gonna hear me say over and over, this is one of my favorites, this is one of my favorites. And I bet if I were to ask you, you would say the same thing. <laughs> For uh, 
an occasion as important of the um, birth of Jesus, one song wasn't just wasn't enough. Um, Charles Wesley, many of us know the name Charles Wesley. I know Amy does. <laughs> Um, Charles Wesley was a prolific uh, song, hymn writer, hymn composer. Um, he wrote, can anyone, would anyone care to take a guess uh, as to how many hymns Charles Wesley composed? Anyone? It's Charles Wesley, Charles Wesley composed almost 9,000 hymns. <laughs> hymns and carols. Um, he wrote his own song about Jesus' birth. Um, it's interesting to note that the original version of this um, started with, hark how all the welkin rings, how all the welkin, welkin rings. But thankfully for us, his friend, uh, a guy named George Whitefield, um, changed it, uh, the text, to what we sing today, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Um, it's also important to note that, that a lot of Wesley's hymns, and this one was no different, had a vast uh, number of verses. It would not be uncommon to have, you know, 10, 12, 30 verses uh, to a hymn. Uh, thankfully, I think we have the, the top three in our hymnal. <laughs> it would be like the entire service. Right? It, it really would be. It really would be. Um, so, you know, we have, this, we have this hymn that comes to us. The song starts by calling us to listen uh, to the angels singing about Jesus' birth. Hark basically means, hey, you guys, listen up, okay? Um, there's, there's a, I was, uh, I was going to get off topic, but I'm not going to get off topic now because I can't remember what I was going to get off topic about. Um, uh, oh, I know. It, it reminds me of uh, in the Bible when you, when someone says, behold, <laughs> it's drawing attention to, you know, this is it, behold. Um, same thing with Hark. Hark says, hey, you guys, listen up. I've got an important message for you. Um, and the herald angels are messengers from God who have a really important message, as if, as if anything they say isn't important. Um, while angels we have heard on high tells us the story of the shepherds, Wesley's hymn starts, starts there, but goes on to say who Jesus is um, and to marvel at the mystery of God being born as a tiny baby. Um, so, who is that newborn uh, that the angels are singing about in Wesley's hymn? Well, he explains that he is the king who will bring peace between God uh, and, and people, uh, sinners, um, back in, well, yes. Um, and that even though he is adored by even the most important and impressive beings in heaven, he was pleased to become a human, uh, veiled in flesh uh, on earth. Wesley Im really imagines Jesus um, as, as a frail little baby, yet calls uh, us to hail, which is, is, you know, we cheer someone on, right? Hail, what up? Um, I, think of, I think of the first thing that comes to mind for us is, is, is Palm Sunday. Um, when I think of uh, right on King Jesus, hail King Jesus, all hail. Um, so, you know, we're cheering for someone, we're cheering Christ because he is the Prince of Peace who brings light um, and healing to all. The hymn's first stanza, um, the hymn's first stanza uh, sings about the work of Christ uh, as the second uh, um, second Adam, sort of, which erases the image of Adam representing sinful man and uh, stamps us with the image of Christ. That's, that's a whole lot of stuff that we can go back to if we need to. But singing this hymn um, is, it, it not only celebrates Jesus' birth, um, it also reminds us 
of the bigger picture um, of what Jesus did uh, in throughout his life, his death, his resurrection, and ascension. <coughs> The other verses, the, the two other verses, I'll read them to you. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with us to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. And then the refrain we sing once again, hark the herald angels sing, glory, to the newborn king. Oh. I'm going to move over to um, literally, literally, I think my favorite Christmas carol, Joy to the World. As I have some cocoa. Man, that's good. Oh. Carol's got the right idea. She's got some wine. Yeah, yeah, she. <laughs> you are not playing. <laughs> that's what makes it a party. All right, so I'm going to uh, do an intro, and then we could sing the first verse of, of Joy to the World. Joy. <laughs> a really 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 i'm gonna uh let me see if i can share my screen i want you i would like to share something with you um so i want to share this setting of joy to the world with you. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite setting of this. It's by a guy named Mac Wilberg, who is the composer, he was the conductor of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, now called, I think, the Tabernacle Choir. They've dropped the Mormon. <laughs> um, what are you gonna do? So let me see, let me get to share screen. Okay, here we go. Can y'all see this? Okay, so this is um, Renee Fleming, uh, incredible, incredible opera soprano singing with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And hopefully this plays jink. That is wonderful. Let's see, have I stopped sharing my screen? <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> there isn't, I have, and I've listened to probably 95% of all the settings of joy to the world. <laughs> and that is, that is the most joyful one I uh, have ever heard. Um, there's another setting, uh, the same setting, but just for choir without the, the soprano soloist that is just marvelous. It just, it, it gets my heart pumping. Um, it's so joyful. So we've been talking about um, of these carols that are, that are uh, hymns, basically. Uh, and Joy to the World was uh, written 
by a gentleman named Isaac Watts. Um, it, it's actually a paraphrase of Psalm 98 about the Messiah's coming um, and, and in his kingdom. Um, so my question is, why, um, why sing a hymn based uh, on an old psalm at Christmas? Because that's what the psalm says to do. Psalm 98 is all about singing a new song to God, um, who promised to judge the world with righteousness um, and uh, the peoples with equity. Um, I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget anything. <laughs> um, so the interesting thing about the text was that it was written by Isaac Watts and it had, it had a few tunes um, that would be unfamiliar to us before um, it was set to a tune attributed um, to George Frederick Handel. The that tune. What's interesting to me about this this for this is a bit this is a uh, a side note here. Um, whenever whenever we think of great church festivals, especially in Europe, you think of uh, I know I think of uh, cathedrals and churches that have bells and bell towers, and I think about the bells ringing all throughout uh, an area on Christmas Day or on Easter Sunday. Uh, and the carillons ringing, and you just have this cacophony of sound. Um, this, this, this intro, it's just a, it's just a, a D major scale. It's just, okay, it steps right down musically. It's thoroughly uninteresting, right? I could do this, uh, thoroughly uninteresting. Um, but then we add rhythm. And the thoroughly uninteresting becomes something very interesting. Um, and so this is, this is actually, this, this, um, this scale is a, is a basis for many, many carillon, for bell peals. So when you, for instance, if you've ever been to a church that has a full carillon, more than just one bell, and you hear all the bells going. And so immediately for me, when I hear this, I, I, I get this image and this, this sound in my head of, of all of these carillons going off. And, the, and I think that's part of the reason why it's so joyful. Um, what, does, what does joy to the world uh, invite us to sing? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the savior reigns. Let us our songs employ while fields and floods, rocks and hills and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Uh, no more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. Uh, he comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and the wonders of his love. And the wonders, wonders of his love. Uh, we sing about uh, being... Um, being in that moment uh, of Jesus's birth and announcing um, that uh, announcing that God, uh, the the Messiah, um, that God promised is coming, we sing that we should prepare our hearts, uh, and that because uh, Jesus is God, the whole creation, the whole creation, earth and plains, should sing. Um, this new Messiah, this Messiah brings joy uh, and will remove sin and sorrow, and he will let blessings flow like a river, far as the curse is found. Um, 
that means that wherever their sin, Christ, our uh, Messiah, our Lord, uh, will redeem that, will fix that. Uh, and God will rule over his creation with truth and grace. Um, it, that, that is Christmas. That joy is that, that unspeak, there's a, an old song called Unspeakable, Good News, Great Joy, uh, of, that speaks of unspeakable joy um, put into music uh, by Handel and, and in uh, 1817. <laughs> um, there are so many others, you know, there, there's, there's some, we, we haven't the time to talk about all of them. Um, but I wanted to ask if, if, if you have any favorites, again, um, we could end with Silent Night tonight. Uh, we've talked about that one. Uh, at the very beginning, and we could end. I don't have a guitar, not, nor can I play guitar, but I do have a piano right here. So, so shall we? Shall we sing Silent Night together? <clears throat> You know what? Let's 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 do something different. I was just reminded. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Meredith. I know you were looking for it. I was just reminded of um, of uh, Meredith's sermon a message on Sunday, and uh, I think something more appropriate tonight would be go tell it on the mountain. Just in case you need the words for. <laughs> Go tell it on the mountain. Here we go. Thanks for coming uh, tonight, for joining us and, and singing a little bit and maybe learning a little bit and listening to me go on a little bit. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything they want to say, share or? I'm so glad we did this. I um, Caroling is like my favorite thing that I never get to do anymore and especially not this year. And I always did it as a kid and um, this is like the next best thing. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for coming. One of the I, one of the the big regrets I have, um, COVID. Um, one of the the best times I've had in recent in in recent memory, caroling, was last year when I joined the group that went to St. James House, and that was so moving for me. That, that whole experience was just so moving for me. It, we, we caroled through in rooms and down halls and we wound up in a big room where there happened to be a piano. And then it just became a free for all, um, you know, of people calling out their favorite carols and playing and singing. And um, some uh, people uh, in wheelchairs came over and, and just, everyone gathered around the piano and that that is something that I I won't soon forget so I really look forward to the day that we can do that again because that that was a that was a wonderful way to uh to welcome Christmas 
Yes, this was lovely. It brings back memories because uh, I grew up um, caroling um, every Christmas. Um, I remember as a child, we used to do that a lot. So, um, yeah, I love doing this. So I can't thank wait. you for doing it. Thank you for, for being here. I can't I can't wait uh, for the day that we can we can go caroling together again. I, I long for that day. Absolutely. And so speaking of longing, I just want to acknowledge and lift up um, before we end and celebrate that is that next week is um, Blue Christmas service. So uh, weather permitting, it will be outside. Um, if it's cold, there will be more room for cars. If uh, weather or COVID keeps us from it, uh, we'll live stream it from uh, the church. But um, I imagine there are many of us for whom this is gonna be a, um, I won't say a night you don't want to miss, but a night you can't miss. <laughs> so um, I do invite you into our Blue Christmas uh, worship um, next week. And just once more, just thank you, Garrett. Thank you for bringing a little bit of cheer and carols to and history and song and celebration to our time. Yes, thank you, Garrett. Would, you close, a, would you close us in a prayer? Or a song? Yeah, I was like, would you close us a prayer or song or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's... I think Carol was trying to say something. Oh, oh, sorry, Carol. Go ahead. I was just going to thank you because I think Christmas carols, you know, we've sung them since we were kids. And I think you're so used to the tune and you just sing along. But this really makes me want to look at the words and understand the meaning rather than just, you know, okay well what are you really saying or singing with that though? there's a wonderful book that if you can get on amazon mm -hmm. i have it on my kindle well on my kindle app but it's called um the carols of christmas by a guy named andrew grant um and it it's it's a small book it's just a little over 200 pages but it gives a lot of history very in-depth there it is right there the Carols of Christmas, a celebration of the surprising stories behind your favorite holiday songs, is a wonderful book. Wonderful book. Thank you. And for $1.99, you can download it to your Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. Well, I hope to see everyone on, uh, on uh, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Either virtually or in person. All right. So uh, let's sing a let's let's sing a song. Let's sing a song. Tell at night. Let's do Tell at night. I'm down for that. <laughs> so, I don't even need it, but Meredith's probably going to beat me to it. Oh, okay. So you're just going to just you're. Ugh, where is Silent Night? So I actually have another one I want to 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 sing after to share with you after Silent Night. It'll be real real quick. Um, Silent Night is one of them. So you know we can't do anything without without introducing something new. And last year we introduced um, a text that 
um, that, that some, some knew and some weren't familiar with. And the text was, love came down at Christmas. And, and this is the, the, the reason for the season. Um, and this is where I think we're going to sing this again this year, this Christmas Eve. But I want to just read for you the text and then sing for you um, uh, the first verse. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. Uh, love was born at Christmas. Stars and angels gave the sign. Worship we the Godhead, love incarnate, love divine. Worship we our Jesus, but wherewith for sacred sign. Love shall be our token. Love be yours and love be mine. Love to God and all men. Love for plea and gift and sign. So I'm just going to sing the first verse of this. One of the most beautiful melodies to some of the, the, the uh, most beautiful texts um, that I've ever known. So I hope everyone has a wonderful night and uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>